Hello everyone, this is Charles with Total Focus Lawn Services. I just wanted to give you an, an update on this uh, uh, Cub Cadet uh, Walk Behind More that I posted a review uh, about a month back. Uh, what I talked about in the last uh, last review uh, was pretty much basically just some of the features that I liked about it and the overall appearance of it. Uh, but now, uh, as I've had it for about a month, and I put uh, just a little over, I hope you can see that the sun is shining in a certain place. I put a little over 20 hours on it, um, and, I, and I come to find out, I mean, it's a pretty good mow. It, 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 it really mows well. Um, it, it's got a pretty good, it's got a, 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 quite a bit of power to it. Uh, it stands up to that uh that 382 cc um uh, that i was telling you about the pretty powerful more i mean it pulls it pulls really really good i mean you know and again like i was showing you you had your gears back here where you can uh uh put it in reverse uh put it in neutral they recommend that you put it in neutral uh for starting it uh you know then you got your reverse uh if you get into a little tight uh tight situation and uh you can't manhandle the more and uh pull it uh pull it back up out then you just put it in reverse and just kind of like bag it back out and pretty much reverse uh when i load it on the trailer i leave it in reverse that kind of like basically locks the wheels so you know it won't be you know flying around moving around on the uh on the uh on the trailer uh but you know i, I do highly recommend that you know or more or uh, this heavy and uh, kind of like uh, at this price, a little over a thousand dollars, that you secure your equipment. You know when you put it put it on the trailer. But um, again, like I said, when I operate it, uh, it, it 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 gets it gets the job done uh, three times faster than uh, the regular uh, Toro mower that I was using, the 21 inch cut uh, push uh, push mow self propel, but uh, uh, the the uh, self propel on this one compared to that one is just like uh, different between day and night. That one you pretty much uh, the wheels were turning. You was feel it felt like you know it was pulling. It was kind of like assisting you. But this one right, this bad boy right here, I mean it takes all the wear and tear off your body. It does all the pulling. I mean it really pulls at a fast pace. Uh, so far with a whole with a month, you know only had a few little minor problems. I don't know if they are kind of like factory defects or or just you know plain old everyday uh, uh different stuff that a lawnmower actually does i mean i noticed that on this wheel right here uh when i'm actually cutting uh this wheel uh i wouldn't say that it it, fr it freezes up but it's kind of like it stiffens up it doesn't turn as freely as um as the one over on the uh, on the right hand side, uh, this one right here. And so what I did was I, you know, I mean, I, I know it was done by factory robots or professionals or whatever, but you know, what I did was I actually loosened that screw up there a little bit. And then uh, on the other hand, what I did was I added some grease in there. I mean, you know, like I said, just cause it's brand new and it comes from the factory doesn't mean that uh, all the steps and everything was actually done the way it was supposed to. So I put a little grease in it and it actually straightened up. It done good for a little while. So what it was doing at first when you put when you put it in third gear or whatever, you know, put some power to it, it would kind of like, you know, pull to the left. It would pull to the left and that was putting, you know, more stress and strain on your body, you know, trying to cut, trying to trying to handle it and everything. So uh it stopped it for about a week. Uh then I noticed that it came back so what I'll actually do later on is I'll probably, you know, hit it with some more grease. You know, again, I like I said, I don't think I don't think loosening up that uh, loosening up that screw right there gonna do a whole lot. Uh, yeah, I actually loosened it up and I noticed the difference between it and the other screw. But again, like I said, it's, it's, it's I mean it's a really pretty good more. Uh, and really, you know, having this big engine on here, 382 cc with overhead valves and stuff like that. You know that doesn't mean that it's gonna be really loud. It's not. It's not. You know, really loud. More. I'm trying to figure out exactly what, who manufactured this more. What kind of more. What kind of motor is on it. 
I'm not sure. I don't even know if it's a Briggs and Stratton or Kawasaki or, or a um, or a uh, or, or what it actually is, a coal or Kohler or what. But you know, I said it's a pretty good motor. And like as I told you before, you know, it's got the air, got the oil filter on it, and it's got the recommendation of what uh, what weight oil uh, you should be putting in it. You know, got the pretty big nice tires on it. Again, like I said, it's it's pretty good. Uh, one of the downfalls I hate about it, but yeah, I mean, I think pretty much basically because it's 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 it's, uh, it's a new more. Uh, it's, you know, it's got this two gallon gas tank on it. All, it has that window that actually I don't know if my shadow is in the way where you can actually see it, but it has that window that gives you uh, some kind of indication of uh, how much fuel you have left uh, to cut for the rest of the day or whenever you're cutting. And it's kind of like hard to tell. I'm mad because the gas is so clear and the uh, and the fat and the, and the uh, tank is so new to you just can't see it. I guess over time that uh, tank will probably get some oxidation on it, probably fade a little bit from the sun, and, uh, turn a little dark or something like that. And that way you can probably get an uh, accurate reading. But me pretty much basically when I go out and get ready to cut, uh, I always, when I stop at the service station to fill up my vehicle, I always... Uh, fill up the tank, but again, like I said, it probably just need a little age on it, a little wear and tear. I mean, a little, you know, a little time on it, and uh, you should be able to see that. Um, another thing that I found that's uh, uh, causing a little issue, a little problem, a little minor issue, I don't know um, if it's a factory defect or not, or not, but when it's ride, when you're riding around on the trailer with it, um, and you know, you tie it down and just ride around the trailer, I guess. You know bumping and hitting all the bumps and shaking up and going up and down the road it tends to flood itself okay you can be sitting on the trailer and you get to a job and you get ready to uh get ready to uh, uh do a job and you go to turn the key to uh actually uh crank up the more and it just spins and spins and spins and it won't turn but on basically what it is you you know follow the instructions uh they pretty much basically tell you to uh, move the shift lever to the neutral position, uh, move the throttle to the rabbit position, which is the fast position, uh, uh, insert the key, turn start position, release key to run position, but it won't actually, it won't actually turn, it just keep turning and turning and turning and turning. It seems like you have to turn it pretty much basically anywhere from 45 seconds to a minute for it to actually go ahead and uh, crank. So again, like I said, uh, I don't know if it's bouncing around on the back of the uh, trailer uh, and uh, actually flooding itself or what, but it does eventually crank. But again, like I said, I don't know if that's a factory defect or uh, maybe I'm filling it up with too much gas or the quality of gas or whatever. But anyway, it, it doesn't do it that often. Just pretty, pretty, uh, pretty, uh, pretty frequently. It's no, it's no big deal. Uh, but you know, again, like I said, you don't want to. You want when you when you turn it to crank it up. You want it to. Continue to turn and turn and turn, you know, putting wear on your starter, putting draining juice from your battery, you know, getting yourself in the position to put in a new ignition switch or a new starter or something like that on it. But I don't know why it does it, but you know, it does, and you know, hopefully it'll it'll fade and go away sooner or later. But um, I haven't actually opened the cover yet uh, and got off in there uh, to see the pulleys and everything back behind there. I guess basically because it's still brand new uh, i don't have a a, a a need to actually do that but anyway it has some screws look like they need 716 or or maybe um seven or eight millimeter or something like that uh got screws all around it uh you can actually remove those screws then and you'll be able to access your uh belts and your pulleys you know put some grease on your pulleys uh you know check your belts See if anything got up in there, any kind of sticks or anything, any grass or anything like that. Because one thing you want to do, you want to keep it uh, free of uh, debris or anything that could cause it any kind of damage. So, um, again, like I said, it's a real, really good more. I wouldn't, I wouldn't hesitate to buy it again. You know, I, th I think it's, you know, uh, it's going to last for a pretty good long while. Uh, one thing I did do. Uh, is initially when I bought it, uh, it had these uh, standard uh, standard blades on it. Uh, 
And what I did was I actually uh, did the research uh, and found out the part number for those for those particular uh, blades, and then uh, cross reference.